So now you mentioned a couple times, sort of in passing, but I want to, and by the way, that was great, a great <laughs> sermon. Um, but I want to get down to this a little bit more of the DC stuff. Okay. So, cause I know everybody's like, so what's it like? And what, for example, um, like what have been something surprising about moving to DC to start a church in DC? Yeah, I would say the cost of living, shocking. Um, but uh, probably, I mean, we sort of saw that coming, but I would say the loneliness was really shocking. Uh, it makes sense. Most people move up there in ones and twos, and so their whole social network and structure is somewhere else. But we were ranked the second loneliest city in America, just behind Vegas, and you feel that. Yeah. And as we've built community, people are drawn to it, I and it's that. become their best friends. And so I would say that. The second thing I would say is I was surprised by that people aren't really clamoring to talk politics at church. Uh, I kind of thought I would always have to deal with that, but, but they, they talk politics six days a week, 24 hours a day, and they, they realize everyone asks, how are you doing? So can I elevate your position, use your position to elevate me? Nobody asks, how are you doing? And they were like, to show up at a church and you're ministering to our souls, leading us to Jesus. I know that you make the tree good and the fruit will be good. You change people's hearts and their lives change. And what's great is we're just preaching straight Jesus right into their heart and people want it, long for it, and thank us for it. It's pretty amazing. It is pretty amazing. awesome. Yeah. Yay, isn't that cool? So, um, well, you had any interesting people come to church? <laughs> <laughs> yes, all kinds. Uh, it's really, we are right in the middle of the city. So it's, I love it. Like it's, we're diverse in every way and just like the city and it's awesome. And so a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> I'm laughing because I know what you're asking. Like a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, we had a lady wheel in and we've got homeless people that come and she's sitting on this side of the room in her wheelchair and the vice president of the United States is right over there. So six months in, uh, he's visiting, which is great because, you know, he slips in, people didn't know. So we did our stand up and greet people moment. And these uh, people turned around and were like, oh, hey. Uh, so that was fun. Um, one of the Supreme Court justices just came a couple weeks ago, yeah. just walked up the alley with his family, like oh no God. entourage, just rolling in. So you never know who's yeah. going to walk in, but right. it's people from every walk of life. I love it. And have their hands on some fascinating things in the world. Like I lead a Bible study of guys that it's, you know, Homeland Security and FBI. And I mean, just a hacker, uh, for, you know, for the Pentagon's bizarre, but it's really, it's you really gotta fun. feel safe. I, I, I did ask him, I'm like, can I just hand you my phone? And, uh, or not even hand you mine. Could you pull out your phone and like show me my bank account? And he was like, ah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so I'm like, great. Just wanted to make sure. Great. Awesome. So. Okay, last question. How can we be praying for you and supporting you from here? Yes, and thank you for asking that. I, I would say um, pray for our staff. We have a church that's growing fast. Like I said, we're, we're, we're at 800 people now and climbing. I've got a staff of six of us, including myself, and the oldest of which, not including me, has just turned 30. So I've got a small, young team that's carrying a lot. So I would say pray for them. Their stamina, they're doing great, but just pray for them and that we'll add the right people the right way. And then, um, and then honestly, it's just, it's an expensive city. And so pray for us financially. It's, it's, people are giving and growing in that, but to overcome some of the barriers of, in the city, we just need people to continue to support us. It's a challenging place. So just pray that that'll continue to happen because uh, we'll need it. And, and I'm watching other church plants struggle because they lack that base to overcome some of the barriers. And particularly in DC, a lot of the neighborhoods, as rent rises, churches are selling their buildings to become condos and places like that. So you have whole areas of the city with no church presence at all. And to break into that um, is, is a challenge. So I would, I would pray for that. We're going to pray for it, and we're going to do something about it. Yeah, thanks, Give them one more hand. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, this, was fun. <laughs> this was a fun day. All right. Now we are going to do something about that. You know... Uh, if you were here last week, and if you weren't, uh, you'll know now. We're in this three-week campaign. We're calling it Above and Beyond. Dan kicked it off, Pastor Dan kicked it off last week beautifully, 
and helped us to see what we're doing missionally here in the city locally. And then now today, we've been focusing on nationally, particularly with our brother Ben in DC. Next week, you're gonna hear from a really gifted young pastor and he's going to, we're gonna talk international missions. The goal that we really felt like the Lord gave us to set for ourselves is a three-week three run where we would raise $500,000, half a million dollars, above and beyond the normal giving that's going on here. That would just all go in these three directions. Now, let me be specific since we're focusing on national today. A half of that, quarter of a million, at least half of that, we're going to send straight to Ben. And let me tell you what uh, it's going to be used for, because I think this will really just put some, some, some teeth in it for you. Last night he came over for a little coffee, and Suzanne and I got to just talk. And I said, suppose we could raise you a quarter of a million dollars, boom, like that. Could you use it, and what would you use it for? He was like, oh my gosh, yes. I'll tell you exactly what we use it for. He said, every week to use the Howard Theater, we're having to rent from the AV company the, the lights that come in, the sound and the speakers, the microphones and all that stuff, the, all the AV stuff. He said, we're having to pay rental on that every single week. He said, if you added it up, probably in about half a year, we could have bought the gear because it would cost about a quarter of a million dollars. So we're just, just hemorrhaging these dollars, but I don't have the infusion of cash to just buy the gear, because we go offering to offering week to week. And I said, we are gonna make that happen here at Faith Bridge. We're gonna buy the gear for you. And so that's what the quarter of a million, half, at least half of the half that we're gonna raise, half million that we're gonna raise these weeks, that's what it's gonna to go to. So I'm gonna ask you to be generous. And I know I'm not asking you uh, to do anything that's counterintuitive to you as it is, you're already ready and you're eager. And some of you are like, sit down, let's just go ahead and do it, we're ready. But for those of you who this is kind of a new thing for, let me just say one more brief thing. Because I really do hope that some of you who maybe you've never given an offering before, you'd say, you know what, it's time. And 100% of this offering is gonna go outside the walls. Um, and uh, you've just heard uh, about the fruit that's being born where a big chunk of it is going to go in uh, DC. Here's how, how you're gonna do it. If you're a cash person or a check person, still, uh, we got the envelopes for you. As Pastor Dan showed us last week, there's two of them. This envelope is just the normal, this is your weekly offerings. You just do what you were normally already gonna do. Um, but this is the above and beyond envelope. And if you need some, the ushers I see there in the aisles and they'll be happy to, you just say, I could use one, raise your hand, they'll be happy to, to give you one. And, but many of you are like, yeah, I don't really do the paper stuff anymore. What about me? Just go to the app, FaithBridge app or faithbridge.org and you go to giving and then you just do the little drop down and you need to let us know, especially for our accountants, to know is this for regular offerings or is this for above and beyond? If you'll just make that known and what percent or what amount is this and what amount is that, then we'll make it very clear and, and it's very simple and you can do it even while you're sitting here um, in the next few minutes. I'm gonna ask you to do that. Let me say one last thing and that is some of you came and you're like, Gosh, I think I do want to do something that's kind of hitting me. I wasn't really preparing for this, but I, could I have a little time? Yeah, you can have a little time. Why don't you, you know, maybe by 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock this afternoon? I bet by then you'd know. Um, you can take the time that you need. We'll, we'll hit this once more next week as well. But I do hope that you won't just sort of like, yeah, I'm going to think about it, but then you really don't. Because this is important. And this is a way that we can support our brother, Ben, who we're so proud of. And, um, and I'm going to ask you to be generous. And we're going to do a, a, a good thing uh, for this ministry. Let me pray. And then we're going to give back to God. Um, Lord, thank you so much for the fun. Even as um, in between services, one person said, it's just so fun to have Ben back today. And really, it has been, Lord to think back, some of us can think back to 20 years ago 
when our church was just a few dozen and he was our youth pastor. And to watch how he's grown and how he is soaring and the impact that he's making and the people that you're bringing him to do ministry, it just makes us proud. And with his very young congregation, um, with young, gifted young men and women, but they don't have a lot of money yet and they don't know how to spend it or save it or budget it or give it yet, they... They need an infusion, and we can bring that infusion. God, I'm praying that you would help us to be very generous now, that um, you would put on our minds, even now, a number like 40 or 80 or 100 or 500 or 1,000 or 5,000 or more, that you would just say, this is what I want you to do, because you could do this. And this sacrifice here in Houston will be felt up there with the dollars saved on the gear he could purchase, he could hire then another staff person or two, and you would bless that. Lord, we want to partner with him, and we want to help that to happen. So we're just asking that you would use it and that you would uh, do something good through it. And we're praying all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.